welcome everybody to Instagram Success Stories. I'm Farah Stockett with Extension Small Business Education Program. Uh, of course, make sure to check out our website, extension.unr.edu slash busdev, B-U-S-D-E-V, for more resources, more videos in our virtual classroom. And this class is going to be just a very simple primer on Instagram, how to get started with it with your business. So on the agenda today, we're going to have three sections, and those sections are going to be broken down to sort of the mini chapters. So in the first section, the big picture, we're going to look at what is Instagram? Just a really basic definition if you've not really been very familiar with it. We're gonna go over a brief history of Instagram, why we should use Instagram, and then the target demographics of Instagram, which is one of the most important parts of that section. Then in our next part, pieces and parts, we're gonna look at the features, the interface, some practical uses, and then also some pitfalls. And then finally getting down to business, we're gonna look at a couple examples of Instagram success stories. And then we're going to take a look at our action plan. So for the big picture, what is Instagram? So basically, it's just an American photo and video sharing social networking service, aka just social media. Um, it's an app that's going to allow you to upload media that can be edited with filters and organized by hashtags, pound sign if you remember that and geographical tagging, which is location services. So whenever you make a post, you can use hashtags and then it'll also record your location so that it shows to locals in the area. So these posts, you could share them publicly or you could share them with pretty few approved followers. Um, users can also browse other users' content by tags and locations and view trending content. And you can also like photos and follow other users uh, to add content to like a personal feed. So if maybe you're a restaurant, you can like and follow other restaurants to see what they're doing, kind of maybe get some ideas and see what they're doing. So this is kind of the basics of Instagram. So just a really brief history, got to give you an idea about where it came from. It was originally released on October 6, 2010. It was created by Kevin Systrom and Mike Krieger, I believe is how you pronounce it. But it was acquired by Facebook in 2012. So they paid about 1 billion USD in cash and stock for Instagram. So it's a very profitable app. And it's good to have this in your repertoire for social media for your business. Uh, also, it has about a billion registered users as of June 2018. So this is super important. The audience is huge, especially since it's paired with Facebook now, you can reach a wide array of people for your business. And kind of just a little trivia fact, the most liked photo is actually a picture of an egg, <laughs> just an egg, just a chicken egg, posted by the account at world record egg. And it was posted to beat Kylie Jenner's post. So the internet has a little bit of a chip on its shoulder about Kylie Jenner. So everybody banded together to post a picture of an egg and then like it to beat her post. So there's some funny stuff going on Instagram sometimes. So the important part, why should I use Instagram for my business? And there's two big reasons. It's engaging. People love media. They love photos, they love videos. I spend hours watching stupid videos every day. And I'm really embarrassed to say it, but people just love that kind of stuff. When you have a break at work, maybe you're waiting for someone, you're at a restaurant, what do you do? You open your phone, you look at pictures, you look at videos. So it's very visual. It's very, very attractive. From the, <clears throat> if you let me interrupt a little bit far, but uh, <laughs> from the business standpoint, it's amazing what Instagram did. I mean, it took us from a, from a text oriented society to just video and images that makes you feel things and connect with uh, sometimes the connection is adequate we're gonna we're gonna talk more about that but uh, it's basically 
change the whole communication. It's like we're going back to we're going back in time. We used to, you know, use images before the older writing. Now older writing it's been communicated with images and video, and uh, it is it is the right tool to do. It's what is trending right now in your business. Exactly, and it is a way to connect with your customers because the more engaging that you are the more that your customers will engage with you and the more customers that you'll get because they'll want to share their experience with the others that they love. So if you ever go to a really nice restaurant and you have a great time, what do you do? You tell everybody about it. You take pictures of your food, you post it to social media. So these kinds of things are a great way to engage your, your um, customers because there's really no way other to do it other than that. Farah, I know that you're going to cover more of this in detail, but uh, engaging, it's, it's something that it's a very popular word out, you know, out there in the business, especially in the marketing area. But engaging, it's not just posting. That's not engaging. And uh, Farah is going to talk more about the engagement process, you know, how to achieve that, because posting is not equal to just engaging. There's, there has to be a click, a connection between the image and the eyes of that person. Definitely, like time? It's, it's not just posting. Yeah, time saving. What's so great about Instagram time saving? Well, <laughs> if you're like me, maybe you're not the best person with time management or with like thinking of things to do in advance, scheduling things. I'm kind of an on the fly person. So Instagram helps people like me save a lot of time because you don't really need to set it up. It's already there for you. It has all the tools that you need to make a great post for your business all in the singular app. So it's, it looks very professional. It's very simple to use. And you don't have to download anything else. You just download Instagram. And then you can start immediately posting to your Instagram and you can take really wonderful, beautiful pictures. And it kind of shows you how to do it. It gives you a grid. It has all these great features and we'll go more into that a little further in the presentation. But this is an app that, you know, you could take years of photography experience and condense it into this little professional app that'll let you take those stunning photos that, you know, back then, when you just had to film, there was, it was so much harder and took so much skill to take photos. But with Instagram, it allows you to do the photo taking and the editing all in one step. And it makes it very, very simple. So definitely. And the engaging part and the time-saving part, it's this double whammy of this app that really allows it to just be a powerhouse for your business. And I do want to talk a little bit more about engagement because I think it's an important word, especially in the business sector as well as the education sector. It's not just that you're posting things on Instagram. It's that you're posting things and people are interacting with those things. So if you post, let's say you have a restaurant and you post a picture of a new dish and you, and you use some hashtags, you tag your location, you make a funny kind of quip about it. Like, oh, look at this delicious steak or look at these wonderful fluffy mashed potatoes. And people can start posting go, oh, wow, yummy, lots of heart emojis. And they're liking your posts, they're sharing it, they're showing their friends. That's what engagement really is. And that's what you want, because the more that people engage, the more that they show, tell, share, like, follow, comment, is the more exposure that your business will get. So keep that in mind when we're thinking about engagement. So let's take a look at another important section. So this is target demographics. So these is gonna be your user base for Instagram, the largest one. So of the average US adult, 40% use Instagram. Now you might say, oh, 40%, that's pretty good. Well, it's almost half. So imagine reaching half of all of social media users with one app. That's the power of Instagram for your business. 
your audience is huge. Just give me 1%, that's it. <laughs> That's hey, it. any percentage is good, right? Because you want to make this easier for your business. You don't want to, don't reinvent the wheel. Just use what's out there. And this is a great tool that's already there for you and completely usable right out of the box. And here's the interesting part. I've heard that millennials and Gen Zs are some of the hardest audiences to reach. Well, look here, 71% of that 40% falls within the 18 to 29 age bracket. You've got the youngins, as I like to say. Um, you're able to reach an audience that is notoriously hard to reach because they all love Instagram. 71% of adults ages 18 to 29 of that 40, use Instagram. That's crazy. And then 48% of that 40 are ages 30 through 49. So you're hitting the two really large chunks of demographics, like 18 to basically almost 50. So think of the wide range that your business can have with Instagram. Think of all the people you can reach that are hard to reach. I know my generation, which are the millennials, we're hard to market to. We're considered the business killer, the big box killer, um, the chain restaurant killer, because we want nice experiences. We want cool experiences. We want hip experiences. So you can kind of make your business seem cool and hip by using Instagram, I know that sounds kind of lame, but <laughs> the more that you get yourself out there, you kind of will attract audiences that you wouldn't normally attract, especially if you have, let's say, I think the type of restaurant that usually millennials don't go to very much is kind of the fast casual. That's like the thing that's most hurt <laughs> as I heard from a bunch of studies online. Um, so if you have that type of restaurant, you could really market it differently. Like I know that a lot of chains like Applebee's and Chili's have a hard time with that age range. So if you have a similar restaurant, having an Instagram, interacting with your, with your audience, your business um, customers, this could be something that can help you reach out to them and show them, hey, look, we're cool. We take pictures of our food. We have pictures of customers having a great time, um, good drinks, good food, good atmosphere, good fun. So it really is helpful to reach those target demographics that you might normally have a difficult time with. It opens up a whole new avenue. So let's talk about just social media apps in general. So this is kind of an overview of the most popular apps. Uh, I know there's a few more like Pinterest, WhatsApp is considered social media now, but these are the most popular ones. So this is based on total US adults and it's broken down by gender. So we can look here that Instagram, it looks like it's not doing very well. That's not true. It's third. So hitting an app that's third, that hits a demographic that's notoriously hard to hit, it's great for your business. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of a heavier side leaning towards female than male on Instagram. And you can see with some of these apps like Facebook, it's female-led, Instagram, female-led. And then it kind of switches up with the other apps. It kind of gets more male-dominated. So of course, YouTube and Facebook have been around for a very long time. Instagram came in a little bit later, so it hasn't had that leg up that the other apps have had. So imagine in your business, if you had, you probably have a Facebook. So imagine if you had a Facebook, a YouTube, and an Instagram, how powerful your reach would be. You would be covering multiple demographics. Facebook tends to be a little bit older. YouTube tends to be much younger. You could cover a wide array of customers with these apps. So it's really something to keep in mind for your business. 
And those um, three and those three um, social media apps, they do not contradict each other. I mean, they complement each other. It's not that, yes, you might be overlapping some, but uh, you can usually use the same content presented in a different way, format, that it is adequate for those apps. And definitely you can recycle that content and you know broader your reach that way. That's a awesome point because I was just going to mention Facebook and Instagram are integrated together when and also when you post on Instagram you can also post to Facebook and to Twitter so there's another app that you can add into the mix that let's say you make a post and uh you just open like let's say a like an animal shelter i'll go a little different I'll, I'll i'll stray away from the restaurant let's say you open up like an animal shelter people love pictures of kittens and puppies so you take a picture of this beautiful little fluffy girl you post it to instagram you can also check two boxes and say post to facebook post it to twitter it takes that same exact post spreads it to the other two social media apps so you've just you've got a three in one deal. It's amazing. And it's so time saving because you don't have to sit there and go, okay, well, I need to make a post for Facebook. Now I got to make a post for Twitter. Oh boy. And I got to do the Instagram one. It's not like that. Instagram allows you to cross post. So it makes it super easy. And since Instagram is owned by Facebook, you can use the Facebook business suite connect the Instagram to it. And now every time you post on Facebook, it could also share to Instagram. So these are great ways to save time in your business, but also to have a broader reach in your business with social media apps. So definitely keep that in mind. Absolutely. Farah, I was going to just interject that uh, mm -hmm. some of your followers that have Instagram probably have Facebook too, right? So if they miss your post on Instagram, if you're doing that thing where you're sharing across platforms, they may pick it up on Facebook or vice versa. It doesn't mean that you just exclusively post everything to Instagram and push it out to Facebook and Twitter automatically. That's good, but you should still post some additional things on Facebook and, and or Twitter uh, by themselves. But it's a way to really make sure that your followers catch uh, your content when it comes across. Definitely. It's kind of like a blanket that you can lay over everything and make sure that you cover all of your bases. And it's really nice that we have this technology nowadays to do this and it makes it a lot simpler. So this is all like great tips and strategies for your business. And just keep that in mind that like you can cross post, you could just post a one, maybe you want to do more picture heavy on Instagram, maybe on Facebook, you want to have more like text because Instagram is more media based. So Facebook's going to allow you to write a lot more. And then Twitter is going to be, it's kind of a weird amalgamation of short little tidbits, I would call them, of text and a little bit of media. So Twitter's very short form. Instagram's very photo, video heavy. And then Facebook's a little bit more text heavy and connections heavy. So let's get into the pieces and the parts here of Instagram. So these are the features that are included with Instagram. And I tried to make the icons as similar as I could uh, to, to the ones on the Instagram app. So the first thing we have are reels. So if you're like me, you used to be a big fan of Vine. So Reels is basically Vine or what is now turned into basically TikTok. They're very short, um, video, short, short, short videos. Um, they're usually pretty funny. They only showcase something for a few seconds up to, uh, Mike, how long are the Reels normally? I think all a short video on Instagram is one minute. And they hold, yeah. they hold you right to that 60 seconds, man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't if think it's, I've if seen it's a longer, long. they just clip it off too. So, yeah, so I don't think I've seen too many long, long reels that go up towards the minute. 
I've usually seen reels that average about 10 to 15 seconds. They're very TikTok-y, Viney. Um, and another yeah, good thing. Uh, I think the, the more effective ones are, you know, the 10 second, 15 second videos. Hey, I'm here, you wanna know more? Click. Yep. <laughs> and the cool part about this, since Instagram and Facebook are integrated, you have the ability to use Facebook Messenger on Instagram. So if someone is messaging your business, you can see it both through Messenger, through Facebook's Messenger, and through Instagram's Messenger, because they're all integrated. So you can also send photos and videos and messages, and these are, could be all private, but do realize that anything on the internet might not be as private as you think it is. So keep it professional. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So it also has shopping. You can actually now discover and buy products on Instagram. And this is amazing because it's turned into almost Etsy. So Etsy is another app where you sell stuff online. So it's basically a small business app. Instagram said, hey, that's a really great idea. I'm going to borrow that and I'm going to change it a little bit. So if you're browsing through Instagram, like the other day I saw a picture of earrings, I'm like, wow, those are really cute. Well, I could buy them through Instagram. So this could be something later on as a more advanced move for your business. You could start offering to sell things on Instagram. You can link to your website, link to your store. You can do it directly through the app. There's tons of options here. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, so the next thing would be stories. And these are like little, they call them everyday moments. They're fun, they're casual, and they're temporary. They only last 24 hours. So maybe let's say you're having a flash sale and you're like, hey, get down here. We're having a great big sale. Come down and you kind of flash out a story. And people will see the story, they'll click on it and they'll see your ad that you're kind of running about your flash sale and they can go to your location and purchase your goods. So this is really great for temporary things for your business. Maybe you got a special shipment in, you have a special sale, um, you have some stuff for the holidays. You don't want it to be there forever. You just want to be there temporary so people don't think it's always there. It's not evergreen, as we would say. Um, yeah, so that's I've, had, I've had small business owner ask, ask if I'm going to spend so much time preparing and posting the social media, why do I want it to disappear in 24 hours? <laughs> and uh, Fair is exactly right. If you're having something that's time sensitive, that uh, let's say you're having a Halloween sale, right? You don't want that to be on your feed probably, you know, in December. It's, a, it's of no use to you to have it in your feed in December, right? You might be able to put something a little more evergreen in your, in your feed, but um, for something that's just going to happen and disappear, it's 24 hours and that, that's what you use stories for for sure and yeah, the whole definitely. concept is, is is to keep your feed with relevant content um so it's something that is not available anymore it's not about quantity or in, in your feed it's about quality so that's 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 a great tool to just to keep the the content um you know good yeah, we want the content to be fresh. We don't want someone to go there and go, I'm here for the sale and you go, oh, that was yesterday. I'm so sorry. It creates awkwardness. So it's just better to use these temporary things because as soon as you open up for the day, you can make a post and then it'll disappear after that day's gone. So definitely keep that in mind for using for temporary things. Um, now, if you wanted to do some longer form videos, you could do something called Instagram TV or IGTV. It's basically YouTube. Um, so a lot of apps nowadays, they get very borrowy with things. So just like we kind of have the, the Vine slash TikTok reels, we also have the YouTube Instagram TV videos. And these are just longer videos. Um, they're going to be basically just after the, the size of the reels. So the reels are up to a minute. The Instagram TV is going to be longer than that. Yep. The they, last part. Oh, yeah, was very kind. They tend to steal a uh, great concept, <laughs> tend to get stolen across our social platforms. Uh, 
you know, TikTok's become very popular and suddenly real shows up on Instagram, right? Uh, uh -huh. Very popular and suddenly these long form videos show up and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just it's interesting but there is a lot of copying of features that goes on it's easier for instagram or facebook to um just install a new feature if they think it's going to be good in the marketplace and uh so so that's that's what we have but yeah it still should be on instagram yeah and i mean there's tons of apps doing this right now it is it's basically intellectual uh, borrowing uh, done by many apps. Facebook's doing it. Uh, YouTube has shorter videos now. So like this is something that's very popular that happens between social media apps. Someone does something cool. All the other kids want to be cool. They start doing it. So uh, definitely keep that in mind that if you're familiar with other apps, that might help you with Instagram. You can say, oh yeah, this is kind of like YouTube or this is kind of like Etsy. I get this. So it'll help a little bit. It won't be so foreign, I guess. So it's a lot of interchangeability. Well, and definitely we are communicating now just in general in a, in a wider visual format than we ever have done before uh, via yes. those videos. And even our messaging type apps all have built-in photo video features. And uh, th that's just a trend we have because we all carry around a smartphone in our pockets with a extremely high definition camera that we can use at any time, any place. And so because of that, there's been just a huge rise in how we communicate uh, through pictures and video. And I mean, Instagram is the tip of the sword when it comes to that for your business. Definitely. And I mean, with the availability of especially phones like iPhones, the Samsung phones, these cameras are insane. They could take such great photos and, and pairing that with an app like Instagram allows you to take really professional photos without having to spend any more money than you already have. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the last little feature, it's just the search and explore. So this lets you find other content. So if you own a business in a certain sector, restaurant sector, you could look up other restaurants and kind of see what they're doing. Like if you find a really popular restaurant, you can look through their Instagram and go, hmm, I wonder what they're doing different than I'm doing. Are they just like a little bit more engaging? Is their atmosphere better? Do they have like a cooler storefront? Um, is their menu better? Are their prices better? You can really take a look through that. And even um, you could support other local businesses as well. I think this is great when other businesses like and follow each other and interact with each other because it brings a sense of community. Like we're kind of all in this together. And even though you might be competitors, it doesn't mean you have to be negative competitors. It, there could be some positivity in that. So this kind of allows for that following um, and allows you to connect with other people. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, you know, the old adage we used to watch on TV and you'd see these business competitors trying to destroy each other and doing all this horrible stuff to each other. The reality of that, I mean, there may be some of that. However, I think your competitors are one of your closest sources of information and they, they competitors can really help you out in a bind. I used to, if, if I ran out of ink, for example, in my printing business, I call my competitor up and say, hey, do you have a, a light magenta I can buy from you? Oh, sure, absolutely, because we have the same printer. And we'd exchange stuff back and forth. And sometimes if I had a client that I couldn't take care of, I'd call the competitor and say, I'm sending this guy over to you so you can take care of him. And they would do the same thing. So we're all, once you realize we're all in the same, uh, we're on the same bucket together, right? Just different parts of the bucket and uh, trying, to, trying to make that good. So, so you can always glean something from your competitor. Definitely. And I think it's it's a good thing to keep in mind that it doesn't all have to be cutthroat and, and slashing. There could be a little, you know, camaraderie there as well. So this is just the main interface. Now I use dark mode. It might look a little different if you use light mode um, on your phone, but this is basically what the home and the profile screen is. So the first one on the left is the home. The second one on the right is the profile. So when you first enter Instagram, it's going to look very plain and very empty. 
The things on the bottom are the features that we've just talked about. So the little white house, that's gonna be your home button. You have the search and explore next. You have the reels, you have shopping, and then you have the profile picture. So in here, it'll kind of walk you through, like it's got that big blue button that says get started. And it tells you, you have zero out of three complete. So it's gonna walk you through how to set up your Instagram. And you don't have to do everything at once. You can go back to it and just add more things in later. I always say the hardest thing is setting up a new social media account. You want it to be perfect. It's not going to be. It's going to take a long time to set this up. So definitely take your time on this. And if you look at the top, right to the right of Instagram, uh, try to mouse over these here really quick. Um, you'll see the plus sign. That is how you create a new post, that plus sign in the square. And you could create all your content from that plus sign. Um, the little heart, that's gonna be likes. And then the little, it looks like Facebook Messenger, it basically is, that's gonna be your message. And on the profile side, when you actually have content, it will appear down where that grid square is and down where that profile picture is. So once you start actually taking things, it's gonna appear there. So this is just kind of like a general layout, how it will first look when you get into it. And once you get onto Instagram, you need to make sure that you are checking it regularly throughout the day because customers will send you messages on this messenger little thing right to the right of the heart up there. And if you're not catching the messages, it's not, it doesn't show up anywhere else. It shows up only right here in your app. So you have to make sure to check it or put the alerts on on your phone. So when something comes up, you can see it. That way you can interact with your customers or potential customers at that point. Yeah. And the really important part, I almost forgot to mention, but it's super important. Instagram is a mobile app. You might say, well, you know, I want to use it on my computer. Well, you can't use all of the features on a PC or on a Mac. You have to be on mobile of some sort because the ability to post is strictly stuck to the mobile app. You can look at stuff on the web browser. You cannot post from the web browser on a PC or on a Mac. So keep this in mind, it is a very mobile app. So maybe you like that or maybe you don't. Um, but it does allow you to be a little bit more free. Like you could just take your phone out, check your messages, check your likes, check your follows, see how your posts are doing, and then put the phone away, go about your business. Um, that's what I like about it. It's a little bit more flexible. You don't have to run to a computer and check stuff. So it's mostly, I would say 95% a mobile app. So this is kind of more of the interfaces. We have on the left side, the new post, and on the right side, the activity. So on the new post, you'll see down towards the bottom of the post, it'll say post, story, reels, live. These are all the different types of media that you can share and you can make. You'll also see in the middle-ish, there's kind of like a gallery. So when you have your phone gallery loaded, onto your phone, it shows up in Instagram. So if you took a couple of pictures and then you forgot to post, you can look through your camera reel, your gallery on your phone, and you can post them later, which is really, really nice. And then that picture is gonna appear in this grayish square. Now, something about Instagram that's a little weird, that's very different than any other app. It posts in a square format. Uh, they call it like a one-to-one. -one. So any photo that you take, it's going to squish it into a square. So there is an ability to expand the photo to make it the original size, but it doesn't look as good. So it's definitely going to crop it and put it into that square format. So that's why you see the square there on the new post. Um, and, and keep in mind, if you're repurposing content that you may have created already on either TikTok or um, Facebook, or something you've taken a photo of, or maybe you've created, a, you've done a little uh, editing, or you've put together a little mini, uh, mini ad or something like that. 
it's going to be forced into a square format. So you yeah. have to really keep that in mind. And I know uh, Android phones allow you to shoot in a square format. Apple phones, iPhones used to, but the latest, I think, couple versions of the iPhone have not given you that as an option. You used to be able to actually shoot your photos in a square format on the iPhone, but no longer. So you have to just keep that in mind when you're when you're posting something or when you're taking a picture that this format will be square eventually if you're going on Instagram with it. Yeah, that's why I think it's easier to cross post from Instagram because it's always going to look good if you start from Instagram. It'll work on Facebook. It'll work on Twitter. But that's all up to your personal preference and how many times you want to post and how you want to get into that. Um, eventually, when you have some posts, you'll have some activity. And when you go to your, your little heart, you're going to see everyone that is liking or started following you or commented on your things. So that activity page will hopefully be full for your business. And then this is the messages in the search. So when you hit that little Facebook messenger, it'll bring up what's on this left side here, which is messages. And you'll see at the top next to the fake account, uh, account um, there's like a little camera and then like a little pen pad. So you can actually do video calls and you can write messages. So if a customer, I mean, I can see many possibilities for this that if you have a customer and they want to kind of virtually see what you have in stock, maybe you have like a bridal shop or something, you can kind of do a video call and kind of just pan and show them products. Um, I've done this a few times when, when I went and got um, like Halloween costumes, for example, like I'll say, you know, what do you have that looks like this? And they can show me. Um, this is a really neat way to engage your audience to engage your customers. So think of that as a possibility. And, and also if you, you can do live video on, on this. And so uh, my, my, first, my first interaction with live video was I follow a guy that's a kind of a business guru on Instagram and he was doing a live video and I was, I was working, listening to him through my headphones and I placed my phone on the desk and he said, hey, if you'd like to be on my, my live feed, just put in where you're from, what city you're from. And so I was like, oh, I thought I, I was thinking this was an event that was happening in the future, right? I didn't think he was talking about like right now, right? So I typed in where I was from. And next thing I know, he says, hey, uh, Mike uh, from Las Vegas, where are you at? Okay, I see the ceiling. I see the ceiling. And he had let me into his live video on my phone, like live. So it splits the screen. And you can have a, one person in at a time that you bring on the video. So you could you can deliver like a webinar if you'd like online with live video, and then you can opt to bring people into it at your your will to comment on things, which is a very very powerful feature. Yeah, it's great, and there's oh, there's so many things you could do with it. You can't possibly even talk about them all in like a singular singular class. So keep that in mind. Like there are there is something for you. There is something for your business and Instagram. You just have to explore and find what you like and what works for you. Everything, everybody's going to be a little bit different and they're going to like different things. For me, um, I don't like to do video calls very much because again, they would just see probably my ceiling because my phone's on the desk and I'm doing other stuff. But I like to be able to message because just today, I had a custom Halloween costume made from one of the local businesses uh, down in Henderson. And I just shot him a message really quick. And I said, hey, how's it going? Just checking in. They're like, oh, perfect. I'm making your apron right now. Here's what it looks like. They send me a picture. I go, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. It's fun to be able to interact that way because you don't get that with larger businesses. With the small business side, you could really tap into the engagement that these larger businesses can't do. So that's kind of like an advantage for you. So use yep. it when you have it. Um, and then the last thing is just like the search. So when you go over to search, it just populates based on what you've previously done in the app, what you've liked, what you've followed, what you commented on, what you've searched for. It takes all that kind of an optimization way 
and it shows you stuff. So my account was a fake account. I just made it out of nowhere. So it kind of had some random stuff in there, but there's a puppy dog. You got some kind of ruins thing, got some bears on the waterfall. There's tons of random stuff. So really when you start searching for certain things, it's gonna learn your behaviors. This might creep you out. It kind of creeps me out a little bit because sometimes, you know, you're talking about, man, I could really, I should get Chinese tonight. And then all of a sudden you're on Instagram and you're seeing posts of that more and more. You're on Facebook and you're seeing it. So it does learn you. So again, with everything that we do on the internet, be careful with that. It could be good or it could go very bad depending on what you're searching for. So I would always say, be very cognizant of what you're doing on your business account. Um, especially if you're sharing on the phone, a personal and a business account, be very careful. And we'll talk more about that <laughs> when we go to the next slides here. So again, this is just more interface of some things. So this is the reels and the shopping. And you see, when you click on the reels, you just get a random video and mine happened to be a dog. And so if I wanted to, I could hit the heart to like it. I can hit the comment speech bubble to make a comment, or I can hit the little paper airplane and I could send it to someone. Um, so there's a lot you could do with this. There's a lot of interaction that's available for you in Instagram. Um, and then on the right side, we just have the shopping, which is, I just opened it up, didn't type anything in. And it's kind of creepy because a lot of the stuff is makeup and that's what I search for a lot. Um, <laughs> on on Instagram and things. So it's, it kind of knows already uh, based on my other account. So <laughs> yeah, my, my, my uh, mine doesn't look like that. Just saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. I have, um, well, I guess I have bought a couple of wigs for Halloween. So I'm like, maybe that's why there's a wig on there too. So again, <laughs> big brother is watching. Be careful uh, what you search on your business account. All right, so let's talk about some practical uses. So basically Instagram, it's to build your brand. You can incorporate media to build your brand to show your best self to your customers. And you can connect that brand with your customers. You can link it with outside services and you can also bring them in to start engaging with you. So these are the two practical uses of Instagram. You could really, you know, you could start from the very basics of social media, which is, you know, what are my business colors? Um, what's my logo? What's my design? And you could start putting that on your Instagram and you can even use filters that color your photos a certain way. So like if you have a business that's, you know, has a very blue logo, you could do some cool effects with the photos to do blue as well. And then you could share that with your customers and let them get to know the real business you. Like let them get to know your business and really start to engage with it. So some more practical uses. So photo editing, this is the biggest thing that scares people from Instagram. They say, I'm not a photographer. You do not have to be a photographer. You just have to know how to hit the take the photo button. That's it. <laughs> so when you open up Instagram, it allows you to crop photos, put filters on the photos, and it gives you a grid layout. So if you're not sure how to like center the photo, like you're like, well, you know, I wanna take a picture of these two people like eating at my restaurant and you know, they agreed to it. We're gonna do a fun little photo up. You can use the grid to kind of make sure that their faces are centered. Or if you wanna do like a stylistic shot, you can put them off to the side. There's a tons, tons of things you could do with this. And you can also hop on what I call the trending topics train, which is if there's a hashtag trending, like hashtag foodie, and you own a restaurant, wow, what a great hashtag to jump onto. And then you can start getting your business out there into the global world. And by liking and following, you can also kind of 
contour your account to move towards those other accounts, like other restaurants, other bridal shops, flower shops, things like that. And location relevancy, this is huge. It's your free local advertising. Every time you make a post on Instagram, you can post your location. So if you have a bridal shop in Las Vegas, it's going to show up Las Vegas every time. So when people are in that area and they're searching in Las Vegas, you show up. This is amazing for small businesses because it's relevant. People don't want to look at bridal shops in Mississippi. If you're living in Nevada, you want Nevada businesses, and this is the best way to get it. So there's some pitfalls with Instagram. There's some things that could go wrong. I have to bring this up. It's not the fun part, but it can be a funny part if it's innocent enough. So I call one of the pitfalls hashtag follow fails. Um, it's basically that you didn't do some research before you start hashtagging, liking, and following. You're just kind of blindly go, I like that. Click, 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 click. Oops, I've accidentally followed a not safe for work account that is showing up in my feed. This might not be good for my business. Another one is what I would call a content oopsies, which is inappropriate, irrelevant, or otherwise negative content that you post yourself to Instagram or to other Instagrams. Yeah, just, just in general, as a business owner, you don't want to post anything that is either negative, inappropriate, irrelevant, or controversial in any way. Okay. You yes. And your customers, your clients, or potential customers, your clients, in any way. You may have certain political leanings. That's great. Keep it to yourself. Okay. Seriously, keep it to yourself. Nobody, it can do no good. Yeah. And unless you're, only thing I can think of is, is if you're selling some piece of merchandise or something that's tied to a political philosophy, you may want to, you may, you, that may be acceptable. But in general, Nobody needs to hear your political philosophies, your religious philosophies, your anything that could potentially uh, put off a potential customer. You want to stay as neutral as possible in business. Yeah, so I think it, you could follow that, that old rule that we all used to follow that no one really follows anymore is you don't talk about religion, politics, or money. And I think that could be a good rule for business as well because I think bringing up those topics, it could only bring you pain. Now, if you are selling the merchandise, like Mike said, that's a little different. But if you're, for example, if you're like a tax business, I don't think people really need to know the political stuff with that. Um, you can make some IRS jokes here and there, but I think it's good to keep it lighthearted and to keep away from the heavy trotting Absolutely. topics. Absolutely. There's so much more to worry about in your business than to get into. And, and I know Farah's going to cover this. You don't want to argue with people. You don't want to, you know, I, we've, we've seen, we've seen instances where business owners literally get on and start an argument online on their business page with a potential customer about something that has nothing to do with their business because they posted a post that's, that's controversial. So, so try to stay away from that, you know, Definitely. And we'll, we'll get into some funny examples that are also very cringy. So no worries on that. So hashtag pitfalls. So again, it's the, the mantra that I have is no inappropriate, no irrelevant, no negative. Just remember that I'm going to keep repeating it because it, it will just become a mantra for your business. So this one is what I call an inappropriate post. So this was posted by Kim Kardashian and she used a hashtag that is a little controversial. She used the hashtag morning sickness. Now, this is a topic that brings up a lot of negative emotions for women. So it's not good to hop on it and then try to sell a product to women. So what she's doing is she's like, you know, oh, my morning sickness is so bad here, take this medicine. It makes it all better. It's, it's kind of like a product, like, look at this. 
um, wasn't the best thing she could have did because people got really upset. Now, she's kind of controversial in her own right, but you have to be careful about these hashtags because you want to type in hashtag morning sickness and you want to see the posts that are actually happening with the hashtag before you use it. Always do your research. Look it up a little bit. Well, and obviously she was selling a product here, right? So she's getting paid to sell this product. Yes. Very pandering, I, I thought, you know? And, it is, yeah. And, and uh, women that are going through morning sickness don't want to see this. It, no. you know, it just seemed like it was an opportunistic post and she took a lot of backlash for this. A lot of backlash. So keep that in mind. Like it might seem very, it's, it's, you might say, oh my, well, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. I could sell something. I can connect with my audience. And then you have to really think if someone could take it negatively, they probably will just keep that in mind. And that's the sad, sad truth of social media nowadays. Anything can be misconstrued, even if it seems innocent at the surface. You really have to dig and make sure those layers are safe. So this one's kind of an irrelevant one. It's it's not as um, not as I guess creating angry and induced customers, but this was the hashtag fitspiration. So it's about fitness. And some of these photos, they make sense. You know, you got someone that has fitness jerky. That's a little weird, but okay. Yeah. It's, hey, it's a corner of the market. I mean, people are into fitness and they love beef jerky. You got a couple of people that look like they're at the gym, someone white hiking on a trail. But then you just have a picture of a dog and you're like, well, does this have a lot to do with fit? Like, is someone walking the dog for fitness? Like, what does this really have to do? And then we get weirder with like the beach scene where you're like, this is just kind of picture of like some kind of outpost thing. I don't really get it. So it's kind of irrelevant. So even though this hashtag is very, very popular, it's not good to jump on it if it doesn't have anything to do with what you're doing. So keep that in mind for irrelevant um, hashtags. Oh, uh, this one's my favorite. This is a negative one. So, who? <laughs> it, it's very bad. Um, so, Edmonds Donuts, this was actually a tweet, but I, I just had to include it because it just encompasses everything that's wrong with jumping on a hashtag and not realizing what you're doing. Who's hashtag not guilty about eating all the tasty treats they want? Not even five minutes later. Sorry, everyone. We weren't trying to reference the, the trial in our tweet. We should have checked the trending hashtag first. This was about the Casey Anthony trial. Not a good thing for the donut people trying to sell donuts, jumping onto an extremely controversial case. And they didn't do their homework and they jumped on the hashtag. And then people, they blew this Twitter account up. So be very, very careful with your hashtags. Look them up before you use them. Look through the posts, make sure they're safe. Make sure it's not something you don't think it is. So again, like and follow pitfalls. This is the same thing. Um, make sure that they're not inappropriate, they're not irrelevant, and they're not negative. So when you're on your business account and you see a beautiful picture of a woman, it might not be the best thing to like it or to follow it because you have to make sure that the accounts that you're following are PG or below. You don't want PG 13 plus posts showing up in your business likes, your business follows. People screenshot this and there's a lot of canceling that happens. So if you like an account and it's controversial, someone's like, oh, they like so-and-so and then it blows up all over social media and you're like, what? I just like the photo. But this doesn't matter because people will find a way to destroy you. And it's very sad. I don't like it, but it is the sad truth of this. So make sure that the accounts you're following, they're relevant to your business. 
You know, if you're a restaurant, follow other restaurants. Make sure that they're appropriate. Don't follow anything that could be that, I know, that you wouldn't show your kids or your grandma, basically. And make sure you're not following negative accounts. Like, stay away from satire accounts, political satire, especially any accounts that are what we would call troll accounts that are just on the internet to make people upset really stay away from those because it will hurt your business in the long run. Content fitball, pitfalls, again, inappropriate, irrelevant, negative, stay away from them. So here's an inappropriate post that seemed really innocent and then someone took it very not innocently. So this company that sells clothing said, sorry, ladies, girls not allowed, hashtags. And then immediately first comment, wow, for a general neutral photo, that's a really sexist tag. And then it just devolves into internet arguing. And that's the one thing you don't want is negative press is not good press. It's not press that you want. If you have a post like this, you have to really ask yourself, how can this be construed? Can it be misunderstood? Is there like a layer I'm not looking at? Is there a subtext, a connotation, denotation thing that's happening here? So be careful with that. That could go very, very bad. This one's kind of an irrelevant post and you look at it, it's like a girl, she's standing in front of a kind of a worn down building and you're like, I don't, I don't get it. Um, and then there's a bunch of people just question marks, question marks. And then someone says, enjoy the radiation poisoning. And you're like, huh. And then someone else says, this photo is disrespectful to the people who legit lost their lives. And then you look at the area, it's the Ukraine. And then you think, oh, this is an influencer standing in the Chernobyl site taking what we call opportunistic pictures. Immediately, this whole Instagram blew up. People just upset, like, how dare you? Just like that person in the last comment. So it's not really relevant to the site. Like if maybe if you had more of a historical spin or like this is what happened, but this is just like a model and influencer that's like, I'm gonna take a picture here because the TV show is really, really popular. It's not relevant, so be careful with that. This is probably the worst one I've ever seen, and it's a doozy. So this is very negative. It's a shoe, and it's got some weird stuff on it. And the thing that sticks out is it says, I'm thin and gorgeous. I'm like, oh, someone's going to get mad at that. I can almost guarantee it. And then if we look in the combat, uh, comments, uh, people are upset, and there's some stuff in Italian here, and they say, you know, I really hope you realize your impacts in teens' world and eating and health disorders that could appear from now on. You could have just left it at that, but the owner of this business decided to just double down and do exactly what Mike said never to do, which is to start arguments online with your customers or potential customers. And he's calling people an idiot. He's calling them fat, stupid. Woo, this whole comment section is the owner arguing with everybody that said something negative. If this is the guidebook on how to never run your business, this would be the first thing in it. Never, ever, ever. Even if you like, even if someone says something really infuriating, never start an internet argument. Don't be a keyboard warrior. It's not worth it. Be professional, handle it as you would if they were in person. You know, apologize, say, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry you feel this way. We didn't mean that. Just kind of like the Edmonds Donuts did with their, their tweet. But never do what this guy did, which is call people fat and stupid, which is, whew, um, he's probably not selling many of the shoes. So keep that in mind. So let's get down to business and talk about some Instagram success stories. So Sarah, I was going to share something real quick. Oh, yes. Early on in uh, Instagram's 
life cycle, uh, I, I think one of the one of the things that popped up was I was one of the pizza companies. I think it was, I think it was Papa John's Pizza. They would do a, a Valentine's Day heart shaped pizza, right? Yeah, I and remember that. People started posting on Instagram saying, "Well." here's my heart-shaped pizza. And so people from all over the country were posting these heart-shaped pizzas. Well, some didn't look so good, right? And so people were posting these ones and it literally looked like they made a pizza and then they just cut a heart off the top a little bit, like they were getting less pizza. And somebody was going, this is how mine turned out. This is awful. And what was funny was people came to their, people came to the pizza company's rescue. They came in and said, hey, uh, mine didn't turn out like that. Mine was great. I really appreciate this. And and all Papa John's did is they came out and said, if that's what your pizza looked like, come back to the store. We'll take care of it for you. There was no arguing like, oh, I think you made that yourself. Or like some of them looked like they literally took a pizza and just cut a heart out of it. And it looked awful. And uh, they came to their rescue. So so quite often, don't argue with your customers. If it's a problem with whatever, say, hey, we'll make it better. Come on in and see us and we'll take care of it. You know? That's the way to do it. I mean, sometimes, who knows, you might have had a couple of employees that were on an off day, you know, you don't know, you weren't there. So as a business owner, if you're not watching 100% of the time what someone's doing, it's better just to err on the side of caution and say, you know, I'm so sorry, how can I fix this? Like, how about you come in and we'll make it better and we'll, we'll fix it for you. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, I don't think when you start arguing with customers, you've already lost as soon as your mouth opens. It's not worth it. So yeah, I would definitely keep that in mind. Um, don't don't argue. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> Go and roll. Um, so here are two Instagram success stories that I found in our area, Las Vegas area. So uh, I picked one that I liked and then Mike picked the other one. So the first one is TK's Boba and Creamery. It used to be called Level Up, but it was purchased by someone else. So TK's Boba and Creamery, they do rolled ice cream, boba tea, video games. They have their phone number, they have their hours, they have their address, perfect. If you wanna know what to put on your Instagram bio, that's it. And they only have about 147 posts on Instagram, which is not a lot, but they have almost 2,000 followers. Think of the potential customers that come from these followers. And you just take a look at their Instagram. It's so bright and colorful. Like it just pops out at you. And they take pictures of what they sell. So you know exactly what they're selling here. They have some arcade machines that you can play on. They have some Pokemon cards. If you're into that, they've got ice cream. They've, they just got a sugar rush. It's like a kid's candy dream in this place. And they know exactly their audience. So you can go in there and you can play video games while you eat ice cream and drink boba. So it's a great business. And they really took to Instagram and they, they even have categories you'll see here. They have love, compete, ice cream, games, boba. So they have competitions at the shop and it, this place is packed. I mean, sometimes when you go in for ice cream, it could be a 50 minute wait because there's just so many people. There's people lined outside, the whole parking lot's full. Sometimes the poor Domino's delivery drivers can't even get into the parking lot because there's so many people there. And this is just a small business that started up recently and they just, it, they just picked up and went with it. So this is definitely an Instagram success story because they're just killing it on social media right now. One, um, one thing that um, I was, had a question with is at the top we have followers and following. Yes. So how that works? I mean, the business is following other businesses, other clients. Is there something that the business should do, shouldn't do? What, what's the advantage of that? So yeah, they have all their followers. So every time a customer follows them, they follow them back and they follow other businesses in the area that sell similar products. So um, for example, there's a, uh, there's tons of card shops in the Las Vegas area, baseball cards, magic cards, Pokemon cards, and they follow all these shops. So every time 
someone follows them, they follow them back. And then that's how I found out about it because I have an Instagram where I try to make my cat famous. <laughs> and they liked the photo of my cat. And I was like, oh, who's this, TK's Boba? And then I went on there and I was like, oh, it, it's right near my house. I'm going to go visit it. So they had a really organic reach with that because they just liked the photo of my cat. I thought, wow, my cat's like getting some, getting some audience members here from, from TK. So there's a, I, you might be able to find followers that become potential customers just from something like that. Yes, it's very interesting how you follow and you start connecting and spreading the web about your business. It basically well, it is just a web. And you can follow if you're, for example, if you're a restaurant or, or, or something like, like these two examples, you can follow your suppliers. You can follow other types of in businesses that are in this industry across the country that are not necessarily competitors here in this market, but they're in other markets. You can follow uh, kind of lifestyle stuff that your customers follow as well. Uh, keep in mind that the who you follow is also visible to anybody, right? Mm -hmm. And so followers. So if you look around at something, if, if you find somebody you really like, like an influencer or somebody that you're like, wow, I really connect with this person on a, on a level or this brand, you can see who they're following. You may want to follow them as well too. Yeah, there's so many possibilities with this. And I think um, DW Bistro, the second Instagram success story. I mean, a lot of their photos just have people that visited their restaurants and their merchandise. Like they have a couple of photos of food on the front page, but they spend a lot of time showing people that come to their restaurant. And I think that's really powerful because yep. who doesn't want to be famous in some famous restaurant? <laughs> well, uh, we have a question about uh, just please expand about hashtag usage and other ways to expand your reach. Uh, what's a great way to build a following? Uh, for example, a charity poker tournament. Oh yeah, so for like a charity poker tournament, you would probably want to start researching hashtags that have something to do with poker. So, you could use like, let's say hashtag charity poker. You could try that one and see, you know, how many people are using this hashtag when you type it in the search bar on Instagram, hashtag charity poker. You could see the kind of posts that are happening. And then you might want to throw in a hashtag for the location. Where is this tournament happening? Well, it's happening, let's say Henderson. So hashtag Henderson, Nevada. Um, you could also break it up, hashtag Henderson, hashtag Nevada. So to increase your reach, these hashtags are worldwide. So anybody who searches for this tag could see you. So this is a way to increase your reach is if you do some research and say, you know, I wanna do this charity poker tournament. What are some good keywords? Hashtags are just keywords for your posts. So you have to think of like, how would I summarize this charity poker tournament? And you might want to say hashtag charity, hashtag poker, hashtag cards, hashtag the city it's in, hashtag the state it's in. And then if you have any famous people that are playing in that tournament, you can also maybe hashtag their name in as well. There's tons of ways to do it. And um, I have included uh, a link of uh, keyword tool IO. It is a yes. website that uh, you can definitely research what's going on with that hashtag. So uh, you put the Definitely. name and provides you a little bit of information about that particular hashtag. Yeah, it's always good to research the hashtag before because if you come up with an idea, type it or write it down and then look it up on Instagram and see what that hashtag is actually doing because sometimes it could be something else. You never know. So always look it up first. And then always try to follow accounts that have some kind of relevancy to what you're doing. So if you have, let's say you're a business that runs card tournaments, you would wanna follow other card stores in the area that have these tournaments. Um, you might wanna follow some casinos. 
Um, you might want to follow some famous card players like poker players, for example. And that will expand your reach because every time you follow someone, someone can see that you follow them and they might follow you if they find that you're relevant enough. Perfect, perfect. And the second example, Mike, what do you like about it? Yeah, DW Bistro, I, we've used these guys on, on, uh, on a few different classes as a, as a good example. Uh, for example, during, uh, during COVID, these guys would, would go on live Instagram live video and they would be in the kitchen cooking. And so there was only, there wasn't in-person dining at that point, but you could actually, uh, you know, order ahead and pick up food and that type of thing. And so what they do is they come on like Thursday or Friday and they come out and they'd say, Hey, this weekend, I'm going to be making my favorite cake I used to make growing up as a kid. And so if you'd like to make it along with us on Sunday, here's what we'd like to do. We're selling uh, all the ingredients are ready to go in a drop-off bag. Place your order online here and uh, we'll rent it out to your car when you pull up at the place. And then Sunday, he'd do a live cooking uh, and bake a cake live right there with everybody. And it was great. I mean, it was really great. They were such a great example of how to use social media properly when they're doing their stuff. So they used live video, they used uh, examples of their food, they highlighted uh, certain dishes they were doing. And theirs is really big into people like uh, Bryce Krausman's one of the owners on here. And, and the, the picture that's, uh, that's on the bottom right is him and I believe it's him and his mother that's there, right? So he posts pictures about stuff and he talks about how he learned how to cook from her and that type of thing. And, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool as far as that stuff goes. They, they're very people-centric when they, when they put stuff on social media. And look at how many followers they have. They have almost 5,000 followers, which is great. Uh, oh, that's a good number. Yeah, so, so very good example of what to do. They really thought outside the box during, during the, the COVID lockdowns. And I think it's, it's really reflected their business. And their food is great. So go, just like TK Boba, they're, they're a great little business too. Go visit these guys. Go, go I will. Guys. Tell yeah. them. Tell them you heard from us. Come see, go see them. You know, that's what we want to do in our small business community. Yeah, definitely. And the funny thing is, I didn't even realize who owned TK's Boba and Creamery. It was actually uh, someone that I know from a card store where I used to play cards at. His wife opened it up and I didn't even know because they were following me um, on Instagram. And that's how I originally found them so then I was like oh my word it's Paul <laughs> I didn't even know that so you might find connections like that as well um this is definitely something to think about um so let's move into action plan um very simple five-step plan that I have the first step is I want you to visit business.instagram.com slash getting hyphen started. This will allow you to basically get tips, tricks, tools, and advice for how to start running your Instagram business. It'll show you how to switch to a business account as well, which is super important. The second step is you got to start building your account and your profile. And keep in mind, who are you? What do you sell? When are you open? Where are you located? Just like TKs and DW did. Step three, start planning out five scheduled posts to start building your brand. Think of five things you wanna post about, create the posts ahead of time, and then schedule them or post them as it goes and spread them out a little bit. Every couple of days, maybe once a week to start just to get started. And then, Step four is just to play on the app. It doesn't bite. The best thing you could do is just to play on it and learn how to use it by doing it. And you can learn more about it by doing some research, but in the end, you're gonna have to start using it to really learn how to do it. And step five, make sure you schedule and commit to bi-weekly posting twice a week. Don't ghost your customers, but don't spam your customers. There's nothing worse than getting 50,000 notifications a day from one business when you want to see other businesses too. So make sure that you have a presence, but it's not an annoying presence. It's a nice presence. 
if you're going to capture the eyes of somebody, you know, with a picture, now you also have to capture their emotion and provide something of value to them. So it's not about only a nice picture, it's about uh, an action item after following the picture. At least uh, I'm feeling that uh, that business is present. I'm feeling that that business is providing me with information or it's gonna be relevant near in the near future with their service or, or product. Definitely. And that's really what to keep in mind is this is just to get you started. But after you do that, you do wanna start kind of liking and following and finding things that are relevant to your business on Instagram. But this is a nice like kind of day one, week one, week two, get started plan. But as for that, that's all I have. I just wanted to thank everybody that attended today. We really appreciate you coming and learning more about Instagram to help with your business. Now make sure to visit our website for more resources. This class will also be available on the website, extension.unr.edu slash buzzdev, B-U-S-D-E-V. And other than that, everyone have a very nice Friday.